on, let's give God a hand of a praise in here today. Thank you, Jesus. 
Jesus. Oh, 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 oh. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, 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 oh. you in this place today to fill this room we ask Lord that you would just have your way give us an overdose of your presence so that your will may be done in this place God we need you to move move in our minds move in our bodies move in our souls we need you to move things out of our way so that we can be more like you and less like who we are. We need you to move in our character. We need for you to move the pain. We need for you to move sickness and disease so that you may be glorified in this place and you may be lifted up in this place. You may be lifted up amongst all men as you take over in this house on today, God, we yield to your will and your purpose over our lives. You are our rock, our sword, and our shield, our buckler, our strong tower, and you will we trust today. You are an amazing God, Lord. You did it again. You woke us up this morning. In spite of the struggles I had all night long, I still got a praise in my belly. I can still tell you thank you. In spite of wrestling while I was asleep, God, I still tell you thank you. 
that in spite of all of that God you won every battle for me that I ever fought so right now Lord I'm here to worship you and if I can get you everybody to stand to their feet Lord we pray for the sick and shed in we lift up Pastor Terry. We ask God that you will have your way in her life. We lift up Deacon Davis. That God, that you would be a God in his life. That you would help him continue to restore his health. Continue to give him a speedy recovery. For God, you're an amazing God. David said it like this I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all my fears so right now at this moment everything that you've ever gone through that you're going through that you're dealing with I need for you to go ahead and give God our praise in this place right now release it in this house today release it today in the mighty name of Jesus, somebody need to stretch out, stretch out, stretch out. Oh, we love you, Lord. 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 Come on, stretch out. God said, Hallelujah, I know it looks like you're surrounded. But God said, I need for you to look again. God said, I need for you to look again. Look again back towards your enemies. I've already won that battle. All of your pains, all of your struggles. God said, Look again. I'll deal with them for you. Help with them for you. Come on, release a noise, release a sound, because today we got the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I know I, I, I know this to be true. Lashonda, nobody told me the road's gonna be easy. But I I don't believe. I don't believe. I don't believe that he brought me this far to leave me. Somebody need to give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You didn't make it here today by accident. God said I woke you up and I started you on your way so that you can get your strength back so you can get your power Woo. hallelujah see what well, some of y'all don't understand that why y'all was sleeping hallelujah why y'all was unconscious hallelujah the enemy tried to sneak in and sniff you and take you out but God stepped between life and death and said not some of y'all had people walking around your homes uh, praying on you P-R-E-Y-I-N-G hallelujah praying on you hallelujah that you may fail uh, that, that but as they were walking around uh, praying over you trying to get you to fail and throw in the towel God said I set my angel God said I set my angels that they may set up camp right on the back door and on the front door How? yes Lord Yes, Lord. 
Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, lift your hands. God said, I blocked it again. God said, I blocked it again. God said, I blocked it again. He said, if you trust me, I'll block it again for you. That every time the enemy will try to throw you up. No more striking out. No more free walks to the first base. God said it's going to take you to focus on the ball. God said it's going to take you to focus on the ball. And what you got to do when you focus on the ball is you got to focus that how he's throwing the ball. You let him throw it once and twice. But once you get that mind locked on the pitcher, hallelujah, you got to understand that he He's not trying to throw a ball at you. He's trying to destroy you. But I hear the Lord saying that the weapons of my warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God said it's up to you. It's up to you. I know this baseball season. And it seemed like all the bases are loaded. And everybody's looking at little old you. Right there. You're next up to bat. And they're depending on you to hit up. Because here's what I like about it. Hallelujah. That, 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 that if the opposing team turn their back long enough, uh, somebody will try to sneak a base in. Hallelujah. But that don't work all the time. Hallelujah. Because there ain't nothing but the enemy trying to set you up. Uh, but God said you got that bat in your hand. And he wants you to hold it firm. Uh, he wants you to position yourself. Uh, to hit a home run uh, mama's depending on you daddy's depending on you sister and brother's depending on you generation after generation is depending see the thing I love about this is that you can't say I pass because you're the last one in the pen that can bring your family in. Hallelujah. So position yourself and you look out towards the outer field. I'm not trying to hit it so somebody can catch it. I want to hit it as fast as it coming. See, listen. See, because everything that you've been through up until this moment I know you're sick and tired of it it's boiling on the inside you're streaming throw the ball, throw the ball, throw the ball so I put down my ball but I gotta go dip my hand in some powder so I make sure my sweat won't cause me to slip I wanna make sure I got a firm grip because the fastest he throw that ball I'm going to make sure that I hit that ball even faster. So when he pitch it, I'm already in position for the curveball, the fastball, and the slow ball. So whatever you throw at me, I'm ready for you. And you begin to look at your family. You look at your son. You look at your daughter. You look at your wife. Hallelujah. They're waving at you. Hit the ball. Hit the ball. Hit the ball. And so when a pitcher hit, throws the ball, you knock that ball way out of the ballpark. It's that one time that you hit a ball and you hit a home run because everybody was depending on you. 
So, but I'm going to show you something today. That the enemy threw something at you. And the thing that he threw at you is that he threw something at you to take away your praise. He threw, he threw hardship. He threw headache. He threw all kinds of things at you. Just to take from you what you was good at. I'm a good worshiper. I can praise God in spite of her. So the enemy tries to come in and take from me what's rightfully mine. But I positioned myself this morning. I positioned myself this morning that when I came in the door, I didn't stop and wait for anybody else. I started cleaning up. I started moving things around because I still had a praise in my belly. Oh, somebody give God praise. Sermon number one. So, Lord, as we lift up your people in this community, we ask that you continue to have your way. You're an amazing God. We ask that you throw your weight around in this community. We expand that. God, that you may do it throughout this land of yours. Everything belongs to you. God, I'm asking that you will bring the joy back to those who are weeping. We ask, God, that you would touch the bereaved family all over the nation, all over the world. God, we come against wars and rumors of wars right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask that you bring an end to the war in Ukraine and those other countries that I know not of. That God, I ask that you will bring peace to the wars that we got going on in our homes, in our minds, in our hearts, in our bodies. Ask God that you will settle the devil's dust. And the only way, Lord, we know to settle the dust of the devil is that, God, that you would send your rain. Somebody say, Lord, send your rain. Send your rain. And the word of God is blessed. Let's bless. Let's give God a hand praise. We're going to we're going to read the scripture on this morning. Hallelujah. I want to thank and praise God for We're getting ready to read the scripture. Come on up. Minister Joe Joe, he decided he also want to help out in the deacon board. That was the first place he started at because uh our deacons are out. Hallelujah. So he knows how to handle that position well, so he's going to be helping in that area until we get those deacons back in position. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Everyone, please, Danny. Okay. Buddy. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give God a hand and praise. Read this in concert. Repeat after me. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall now doubt in his heart shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass. He shall have whatever he said. Therefore I say unto you what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that you receive them and ye shall have them. And when you stand praying forgive if you have ought against any, that your Father, also which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, 
neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive you your trespass. In the word, God is blessed. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. I'm going to call for the praise team to give us a selection. Amen. As we're moving forward, once they've given us a selection, then we're going to raise the offering for this morning. Again, I want to say happy Father's Day to all the fathers in the house. Come on, give, give God praise for the fathers that are in the house today. Hallelujah. Come on, let's bless them again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's so good to see you. Turn to your other neighbor and say, neighbor, you look good. Hallelujah. Now give somebody a high five. Give your neighbor a hug, a smile, or something. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together in this place. I will call upon the Lord. I will call upon the for Lord. He is worthy to be for praised. He is worthy to be praised. I will call upon the Lord. I will call upon the Lord. For he is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. I will call upon the Lord. 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 For He is worthy to be praised. 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 Oh, let's magnify the Lord, for He is worthy to be praised. Help me to say, Oh, let's magnify the Lord, for He, for He is worthy to be praised. Say, Oh, oh, let's magnify the Lord, for He, for He. Pray. Say it again, say it. Oh, let's magnify the Lord For He is For He is worthy to be praised Hosanna, Hosanna Blessed be the rock Blessed be the rock of my salvation Hosanna Blessed be the rock Blessed be the rock of my Hosanna, Hosanna, let it be the rock, let it be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna, Hosanna, let it be the rock, 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 let it be the rock. Worthy is 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 the rock.
Jesus is the rock. Jesus is the, the rock. rock that saves. Jesus is the, the rock. rock that heals. Jesus is the, the rock. rock that delivers. Jesus is the, Jesus rock. Is the rock. Jesus is the Worthy rock. Worthy is the rock. Worthy is the Holy rock. Holy is the rock. Holy Jesus! 
Praise the Lord. God, you're worthy. God, you're holy. There's nobody like you, Jesus. You're all I need. God, there's nothing too hard for you. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we honor you. God, we welcome you in. Come on, let's take about five more seconds to worship him. God, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. Lord, we love you. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we bless you. God, we thank you for being who you are in this place. You're so holy, Jesus. You're mighty. And we trust you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. We have faith in you. Hallelujah, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, let's worship him. Let's worship him. We want him to do so many things in our lives. But it's not for some of us, it's hard for us to open our mouths and just simply tell him, Lord, we thank you for another chance. Lord, we worship you. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, you are the answer, Jesus, Jesus. You are the answer, Jesus, Jesus. Whatever I need, you're all I need. Lord, that's nothing too hard for you. You're all I need. I give my life to you, Jesus. I owe you me, Lord. Oh, we worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Come on, worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Lift him up. Come on, let's worship him. Come on, let's worship him. Worship him, worship him, worship him. Worship him, worship him, worship him. Worship him. There's nobody like you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. There's nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. There's nobody like nobody you, Jesus. Like you, Jesus. There's nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. You are the Lamb of God. You are the Lamb of God. There's nobody, 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 There's nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. If I can just get a few more people to say, there's nobody. Nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. There's nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody, nobody. Ooh. We worship you. We glorify your name, oh Lord. Let's give God a praise for the praise team. Amen. I want to, as pastor of this church, I want to thank everybody for coming out to Deacon Scannon's home going on yesterday. Didn't he, just, didn't he go home just right? Come on, give him praise. Amen. We didn't have a funeral because we put everybody out that was coming to a funeral. We put them out. Hallelujah. We told them to go home. If you didn't come home, if you didn't come here for a home going. Hallelujah. So everybody that was there was there for a home going. 
and God did his thing. Hallelujah. I love the Lord on today. And a lot of us are tired from yesterday. So busy yesterday. Yesterday was a really long day for a lot of them because they were cooking. And then they had to clean up what they cooked, uh, cooked at and fed people at. Thank God for Pastor Charles and the Veterans Manor for let them use that hall. We give God praise for that. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And now again, my condolences go out to Joanne. My condolences go out. Our head usher. But God has not received our head deacon. Hallelujah. But we still got a piece of him right here. Amen. His lovely wife. Let's give God praise for her. Amen. And then I want to say for his eldest son, Cornell Rogers, we want to say thank God for him. Let's give God praise for him. And then Robin Davis, let's give God praise for her. And his middle daughter, Endora Cannon, we want to thank God for her. Let's give God praise for her. But we cannot forget his mother, Mrs. Cannon, Grandmama. Let's give God praise for her. She's the head mother of the church, amen. Hallelujah. And she has stood in that position seven times. Seven times. And I can't explain where she get the strength from. I don't know. I was never put in that situation before. But I know if any mothers that lost a child understand what she's going through. But seven times, not at once. A couple times, two in a year, back to back. But she's still standing. And just like I said, I still got a praise, and she still got a praise in her body. Hallelujah. We want to thank God for her. Amen. In her absence on today, she was busy. She stood the test of time on yesterday, all that weight. She, I mean, man, God really worked in her to keep her strength up. And my, my prayers goes out to my aunties, his siblings, because... Besides probably one or two of them were here when the first one came. But I know all the ones that are living at least saw six of them go home to be with the Lord. Amen. So I know that's, that got to be hard also. I know what it feels like to lose a sibling because I lost one myself at the age of 26. He was 20 years old. And that hurted me and that hurted me to the core. I know what it feels like to lose a father as we celebrate the fathers on today. Amen. Uh, we want to thank God for the fathers. Amen. And one of the other things, too, is that when I think about my aunties and how strong they are, they deserve a break. Hallelujah. They've been cooking, slaving aunties, great aunties, all of them been working. Everybody been working over that stove and cousins working over the stove, getting everything prepared. We have so much food down at the repast that we could have fed the whole building and still probably have some left over. So that is labor. That's love, and that ain't nothing but love. And the people of God, the people of God that was at the repast, I even got a chance to minister to one of my cousins from Chicago and minister to a few more cousins that are from here in Milwaukee. You know, the moment they approached me, the moment I began to open up and talk, you can't not just go somewhere and not prepare yourself for ministry. Ministry is you. I mean, I, ha I have a sense of humor. I talk just like you. But if you say I need prayer, then now let's shift gears. Now, now, this is what I do. Let's pray, amen. 
So we go into prayer. Amen. But got to see a lot of cousins I ain't seen in a while and hate that, you know, I, I hate that we have to see each other at those kinds of moments. And I wish that at times we can see each other at other moments. We don't need to always see each other at that moment because that's, a, that's an uncomfortable place. But the moments that we all set up at times, we set up family reunions, we come together during those celebrations and get together and talk with one another and love on one another. And, but in spite of all of that, family is always going to need one another going to need one another. And I believe that in my heart that I can't carry nothing in me against anybody. And there's a lot of leaders that still carry hurt and pain against people, against loved ones. But yet, I feel to me, I feel that's a waste of time to me. Because I got too much in my day I could spend doing something else to be wasting my time worried about somebody else. So why don't I just step back and just keep them lifted up in prayer, and we'll meet again on that page later on down the road in another chapter. Amen. That's the way I think right there. Come on, somebody give God praise. But for Father's Day today, I... My wife gave me my gift earlier. And she was missing one thing in there. Spaghetti and some Jiffy mixed cornbread with some ground beef mixed in there, honey. Amen. <laughs> I don't know. You will get that later on. Amen. Amen. My beautiful wife, I thank God for her on today. Amen. She really took, she really took that to heart, losing her uncle. Uh, being able to have him in our life for so many years and got to grow real close to him. He not only became like a father to me, but he was also like one to her. When you're used to seeing people every day, when you're used to getting a phone call from somebody just about every day, hallelujah, not just when he got sick, but just getting a phone call from him every day when he wasn't sick, amen, and just that when you're used to that, then you say, when the phone call stop, then you stop thinking about it. I still got some messages saved. If I want to hear his voice, I can always go back and hear him say something. You can always go back on the videos. We got videos going all the way back 10 years. So how many weeks in a year? 52, so 520 videos. He was probably, probably only missed 20 of those videos from the times that he was in the hospital, not just this time, but in 20, I believe, 18 when he was in the hospital. And those are the only times that he missed, so probably about 20 weeks out of the whole 10 years. But God, somebody say, but God. Amen. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. We're about to receive our offering on this morning. Amen. I want to thank you, Sister T, for stepping up and standing in position. Amen. Amen. I only am, I only want to, I only call her by that name, T, because I don't know how to say her name. And if she told you her name, I applaud the ones that could say it. I applaud you. Because the way it looks on paper is not what it says. And if you say her name wrong, she's going to correct you real quick. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Could have do it. We could have do the offering. Everybody standing.
Amen. Amen. Listen, let's stand to our feet. We're going to pray over the offering. Amen. See if I can get Pastor Hibbler to pray over the offering. Let's all point our hands this way. Most gracious Father, heaven, Lord, we thank you, Father God, for another day. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to give, Father God, as you have commanded us to do so in your word. We pray, Father God, that everyone, Lord, who came, Father God, Lord, will be blessed, Lord, tenfold, Father God. We thank you, Father God, Lord, for those who had a willingness to give, Father God, but had nothing to give. Lord, we pray, Father God, Lord, that you continue to bless all of us, Father God, Lord, that we would come before you, not empty-handed, but, Father God, Lord, with blessings, because we know, Lord, that we can't beat you giving, Lord, and the only right thing to do is to attempt to do so, Lord, that we will be blessed, Father God, us and our families. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Amen. Get ready, get ready, get ready. I want you to repeat after me, every believer. Hallelujah. Lord, enlarge my territory. Lord, enlarge my territory. Lord, enlarge my territory. Now I got one more thing to ask you. Won't God do it? Won't God do it? Won't God do it? Now give God a radical praise. Y'all know what? I heard them babies saying it real loud. I heard their voices. Amen. So they know it. Amen. To believe in thy heart, he asks anything according to his will, he'll give you the petition of your heart. Hallelujah. Somebody say, Lord, do it for me. Mm. <laughs> I, I love it when we say that the choir is going to get ready to come and sing another selection. Amen. And then the next thing we're going to hear is the word. Amen. And I love it. I, I love it when we say that is because when we're asking God for something to do something great in our lives, he does it in a way that he sets us up. He don't set us up for failure, but he set us up to come up. But a lot of us don't like the way he set us up to come up because it makes us uncomfortable at times when God begins to do something in our life. And when he began to do something in our life, we got to understand one thing right here is that it's going to make you uncomfortable. And when it do make you uncomfortable, you really got to trust God during that time. And that's just simply saying that when God is working in your life, God is working things out of your life so he can work completely and wholeheartedly in your life. So therefore, if he got to move something out of your way, so he can get you to that destination and that place that you asking him to get you to. So if you asking him for a house and you start describing a house to him, God I said, now I got to get you the job to get the house. Because if I just gave it to you, you might not be as grateful as you would be if I bless you with it going this way right here. Because a lot of people, if you give a, if you give a kid a new car, they ain't going to appreciate it that well until they buy their own car. And when they buy their own car, then they'll take care of it, amen, when daddy and mama ain't supplying their needs no more. They'll take care of that car. That, it's that appreciation right there. Are you willing to do what it takes to get the blessing? That's the question. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's bless his name again. Hallelujah. I want to say happy Father's Day to my dad, and I want to thank you for the example you have set from being a hardworking man to your relationship with God. Hallelujah. I thank God for you. Hallelujah.
and happy Father's Day to all the fathers in the crowd.
Pastor Charles at. Yeah, okay. Are we going to have the kids come give a song before you come up? Amen. Let's give God a praise. I heard him over there singing something. Lord, enlarge my territory. Which one of y'all want the mic? All of them.
Everybody standing to their feet. We'll be all right. Amen. Yes, it will. It so, will be. Hold on. All right. It will be all right. Praise the Thank Lord you, Jesus. God Almighty. Hallelujah. Y'all did wonderful. That was awesome. Thank Come you. on. Jesus. Give God a hand, pray for the children. That is so beautiful. Praise God. That was just awesome. I'm going to open a word of prayer. And then we'll go into the word. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you. Your blessing, health, and strength. Thank you for your goodness and mercy bestowed upon us. Thank you, Lord God, for giving us another chance and didn't count us out. Every time we made mistakes and falling short of your glory. Yet, God, you are merciful to us and unmerciful. We ask, oh God, right now, you forgive us for our sins, oh God. 
Knowing, unknowing, cleanse our minds, our hearts. Give us a clear focus on you, God. Remove the busyness of the day, the things we're planning in our minds that we want to do when we leave this place. But let your word bring conviction in all of our hearts to change us from the inside out. So we have a God encounter like never before. We thank you for everything that's been done so far. We thank you for the shepherd, his house, his wife, his family, God. We thank you for the, the praise team, the worship, the musician, Father God. We thank you for the congregation. Even those who had to leave early, God, we bless them in the name of Jesus. That you would touch their lives in a supernatural way, God, to inspire, to edify, build them up in their faith to trust you. Father, we all face with challenges, we're faced with storms, we're faced with issues, some with physical issues, some mental issues, Father, some emotional issues. But yet, God, we know that you're sovereign to heal us all. And so you would be glorified as we decrease, you would increase. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I, I, I want to thank again everyone who came over to the repast and also those uh, Sister Cannon and Sister Vivian and many other Yvonne who assisted in the cleanup after it was a challenge. My God, was it a challenge. And I, I was, uh, <laughs> they had a cooler. <laughs> They put ice in the cooler, right? Didn't have a cap on the bottom. So when ice started melting, water just going everywhere. <laughs> I had to find a mop bucket. I'm up there mopping. I clean it up. The lead come back. There's more water on the floor again. I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> I tell you, it was, it was something. It was interesting. But I, I thank God because the people behaved themselves. No one got out of character. It was a beautiful celebration, and God really just blessed tremendously. I didn't get done after everybody left to about 7.30 myself after I had to go behind everybody, make sure everything was the way the office wanted, the way it was when I got the room. So I thank God for the management in my building who trusted me to be able to use the facility with no charge. And I mean, that was a blessing. No, hey man, that's right. That's that's the reason to praise them. Cause normally they charge two hundred dollar deposit just to rent that room. And I thank God that He didn't allow them to charge me, but showed me favor. I was talking to my mother yesterday. I was telling her about it. I said, I said, Mom, I said, you know what? I said we got this general service, home going service. I said, we have a repass in my building. And I said, God is so good because I was able to get this room what they needed because they were trying to find a space to accommodate all the people that they anticipated that were coming to the repass. And I thank God. My mom said this to me. She said, you know what, son? She said, God has really showed you favor throughout the years. You just like your daddy. And when she said that, I, and even on the prayer line yesterday morning, I was um, ministering to everyone on there about open up their mouth. Because day, every day we have prayers six days a week for my dad's church. And I have a men's prayer on Sunday. And every day, it's only the certain people that open their mouth and pray or even say something. And I felt the spirit of my dad come up to me, the Holy Ghost, and said, the word says, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. I said, you don't have a reason to come on here every morning, don't say a word. You know who you are. You constantly do the same thing week after week for a whole year. Don't say a word. So you can't even tell God, thank you. That just vexed my spirit because I said, I'm sick and tired of God's people saying I love God, saying I'm living for God, but I can't open my mouth just to tell him thank you. So he woke you up this morning. He didn't have to do it. You've been through illness and it could have took your life. He didn't have to heal you. 
And, and I said, but you know what? We all have something. He just said, thank you, Jesus. And I tell you, after that, my mother, she was like, she said, son, I just got so tickled. I said, why? What'd I do? Sounding like your daddy on this line. <laughs> she said, you, you sounded and you rebuked the people just like your daddy in love. I said, well, to God be the glory. Because I started last month when I spoke on Mother's Day. The covenant of love. I'm going to continue talking about that today as well. The covenant of love, because that's just in my spirit. It's a teaching God gave me. And I said, I got to teach this according to what God tell me to do, because we have to be reminded. And I want to say happy Father's Day to all the fathers who are here today. Those of you who are streaming on Facebook, happy Father's Day to you and to your husbands. Happy Father's Day to them as well. But I thank God for giving us another chance to be here in the house of the Lord is such a privilege. It's a blessing because he didn't have to do what he did, but he did anyhow. Amen. So if you could stand and read Genesis, Genesis chapter uh, 2, a couple of verses in here, and then I'm going to go to chapter 3. Now, excuse my voice. My voice keeps going in and out. We're dealing with a respiratory issue for about a month now, but the devil is a lie because I still claim healing, and I know I'm healed by his strength. <clears throat> Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. It says, And the Lord God formed a man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Verse 8. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there put the man whom he formed out of the dust of the ground. And made the, made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant in sight. And good for food. A tree of life but also in the midst of the garden. And a tree of knowledge for good and evil. Right? Go to verse 15. So the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord commanded the, commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat it freely, but the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou shalt eat thereof, thou shalt surely die. Right? Go to verse 21. The Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon man, Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and clothed of his flesh and stead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man, he made he woman and brought her unto him. And, 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 and Adam said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall the man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave also to his wife and they shall be one flesh. <clears throat> and they both were naked and the man and his wife and were not ashamed, right? Go to chapter 3. Amen. Verse 1 said, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, God said, Ye shall not eat, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the, of the garden, but the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Verse 4, and the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die, for God knoweth that the day ye eat of thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. In verse 6, and the woman saw the tree was good for food and it was pleasant to the eyes and to be treated desired to make one wise she took the fruit thereof and did eat and also gave to her husband who was with her and he did eat and the eyes of both of them were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig trees fig leaves together and made themselves aprons verse 8 
and they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden of the cool today. And, and, he, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. You may be seated. Amen. So as I was going through this message many times, the covenant of love began when God created Adam in the garden. Right? It says he formed. That means he designed him, he fashioned him to be what he wanted him to be. And then it says he breathed into man and man became a living soul. So if God didn't breathe into man, we would never have the beginning of a covenant of love. But the covenant of love started when God said, you know what? Let us, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, make this man in our image and likeness. That's when it began. So when God showed me this, then I thought about this passage here where they had the right and the title to everything in the garden. Everything. For their own satisfaction, their own pleasure. But one thing God said... Do not eat of the tree of good and evil in the midst of the garden. That's all the requirement. All the requirement he told them. But because old Slewfoot came along in the garden, he decided to tempt, test, and try them. So you got the, the lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life all beginning right there in that passage. And so and that's the same thing James told about in chapter 1, around 17th verse. He told about the same thing. Because when your desires begin to fester in your heart, even though I've been instructed not to do a certain thing, I do it anyway because of my desires. So this is the beginning of desires, of rebellion. So I said, okay, God, so if they did this, then what is the remedy? So God said, well, the father and his wife had children. So the same spirit I talked about this before. The same spirit in the mother and the father within the children. Only one which was able, when God required a sacrifice, an offering, he gave God the best he had out of unselfishness, out of love and response to what he followed after God from his parents. So then you had Cain come along. Cain said, you know what? I I'm not going to give God what I the best because God I required a blood sacrifice. He wasn't going to do that. So he said, so he's killed his brother out of anger. Then he goes on to Noah. And I talked about this before. So God says to Noah, to Noah I'm going to read this too. This is good. So, so God, what he did, he saw as time went on, the generations became wicked, full of iniquity and sin. So God said, you know what? I'm going to destroy the earth. I'm going to destroy everybody in the earth. I'm going to wash it with water. Except for Noah, his wife, their sons, and their, their wives, and, and two of every creature, because God knew he had a plan to repopulate the earth. So in order for this to take place, the love come ahead and still move on, even past rebellion. You hear what I just said? Even past rebellion. So a Noah, Noah, a Noah, Noah hit covenant. That's what pronounced. A Noah hit. After Adam and Eve exiled from Eden, the biblical narrative feels grim in Genesis chapter 4. Cain sides with the serpent, killing his brother in cold blood. And, and a man named Lamech brags about his murderous, carbonistic ways. Genesis chapter 5 repeats the refrain, and he died eight times, revealing how death reigned over humanity. Then there's a weird story in Genesis chapter 6 that's meant to show a rapid advance of evil. So that by the time we come to the story of Noah, sin has enveloped the whole world, sending it back into a pre-creation chaos. And what this is talking about in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, there was chaotic in the atmosphere. So the world was in a chaotic situation. And, and so he's referenced here that they went back to the same thing because of sin. The world became chaotic. In response, 
God sends a flood, making a restored creation that began with Noah and his family. God entered a formal relationship with Noah and all living creatures, promising that despite humanity's corruption, he would never flood the earth again. You find it in Genesis chapter 8, verse 20, chapter 9 through 17. He will instead preserve the world as its works towards keeping this promise to rescue humanity and creation from, through the offsprings of a woman. That was Genesis 3.15. In Genesis 3.15, that's when God told the enemy, he said, he, said, he gonna bruise your head, thou should bruise his heel. The, and he said, the woman, you're gonna bear birth pains with having children. The husband, you're gonna work from the sweat of your brow. So it's gonna be turmoil and chaos in your life because of rebellion. It says, then God invites humans to partner with him in filling and ruling his world. God's covenant with Noah is unconditional, and his promise is accompanied with a sign of his faithfulness. That is so good. His faithfulness. And it says, the rainbow to remind future generations of this covenant. And when God showed me this, I said, this is so powerful. Because man messed up, God said, I got to fix it up. What you messed up. And you know, and it's the same thing today. Look at the news. What are they doing? Reckless driving, killing each other, unmercifully for no reason. You know, all because of the sin of the heart. It's, 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 it festered in the lives of many people with, still, with so much rebellion against God. And God says, you know what? It still ain't over. Then God comes to the Abrahamic covenant. So after God makes covenant with Noah, evil continues to ruin the world. Isn't that something? He redo the earth all over again to repopulate, to, to fix it, to clean it. And the same old cycle. How many times have you been in a situation in your life where you nurse, curse, and rehearse your issue? You curse, you nurse, curse, and rehearse your issue in your mindset because you're not willing to let go. And when God spoke to me, he says, the reason why so many of my people are stuck in a cycle of rebellion is because they have not come to the place in themselves to surrender to my lordship and my authority. And he says, but I still had a plan. Because the Noahic covenant brought forth the Abrahamic covenant. Because if you follow the scriptures down through the lineage where you had Abraham, then you have Isaac, then you have Jacob, then you have all these different people come after Abraham. But the thing, let me read this. This is good here. It says, God makes come with Noah. Evil continues to ruin the world. Traces down the spiral of humanity. And we are left to wonder, how would God restore his good world? God rescues plan continues. He calls Abraham into a covenant relationship. That is so awesome. God says, even after Noah, the world still went rapid into wickedness and sin and iniquity. So I still got a plan. I come to tell you today that God still has a plan. Even in your mess ups in your life, you might have a jacked up relationship, a jacked up husband. But God says, you know what? I still got a plan. Woo, Jesus. Because one thing about it, the scriptures remind us that I cried unto the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. So whatever comes to your life to bring fear in your heart, God, I hear you before you utter a word from your mouth. I hear you and I still have a plan. My God. Then it goes on. He called Abraham to a covenantal relationship. This redemption, 
partnership between God and Abraham is developed progressively. It means it's through a time span. He promised Abraham a huge family that will inherit a piece of the land in Canaan and bring universal blessings. I love this here. God promised Abraham that I'm going to make you the father of many nations, right? We all know that. We heard it many times on television, radios, wherever you've been in church. They always talk about God said, Abraham, Abram, come out of that country to that, from that kindred to a place I'm going to show you. He said, I'm going to make you a father of many nations. I won't bless you and you'll see everything you touch is going to be blessed. And we go going to be blessed because he loved us so much. He said, I still got to enunciate the plan. So he says, similar to the Noah covenant, this covenant also is accompanied by an outward sign, a reminder to Abraham and his ancestors. God's command that the men to be circumcised. And th this is interesting. God says, when a child becomes at least seven, eight years old, you got to circumcise them, right? Because God knew that because I love mankind so much, the cutting of the foreskin of a male child is a symbolization of my love in covenant, that we're bound together. Just like you remember back in the old days, in the old movies, when, when, when they, they made a, a grin with each other, they would cut their finger, they touch each other's hand with the blood on it, because that means I got a blood covenant. Oh my God, I'm going somewhere with this one, y'all. So, so because of this, this is here. God commands the men to be circumcised, a symbol that sets Abraham and his family apart to show their fertility and their future lay in God's hand. So God is saying, because of the cutting, he said, it's starting with your family because I call you out to be the father of many nations. So I got to set you as an example. So he says, for futility, Fertility and future lay in God's hand. So because I got you in my hand, this is, this is a symbolization of the covenant. God tells Abraham, Abraham to leave his land and follow wherever he leads. Train his family to do what is right and just and practice circumcision in every generation. So it had to be prolonged to carry on throughout the generations because God says, I got to break the enemy's generation. I got to set my generation in motion in your life, in your descendants, in your seed, that your children will be blessed from this day forth all the day of their life because I deem you to be blessed. Yeah. Oh, my God. Then he goes on. This covenant is both conditional and unconditional. It's conditional and unconditional. God and Abraham each have a part to play. Y'all check this out. But ultimately, God will keep his promise to give Abraham a family who will inherit the land and bless the world. That touched my heart when I read that because I thought about the children of Israel in Romans chapter 11 when God said that Gentiles, he said that the Israelites became a wild olive branch. So they began to rebel against me. So you know what I did? I took the Gentiles who weren't even part of Abraham's covenant, which is us today. He said, I engrafted you into the covenant because of my love for you, because they were stubborn enough to walk away from the promise I gave them. So I decided I'll bring you into the covenant. Oh, my God. That's the reason why we're blessed. So then, I'm not going to read the rest of them. I'll do this another time. But you have the Mosaic Covenant. You have the Divinic Covenant. Then you got the New Covenant. And then you got the Messianic Covenant. Because all of this all points to Jesus Christ. Anything in the Old Testament, it's like when you take a map, you put a map on this wall, right? 
I remember this story. I remember uh, back in the 90s, my wife and I were praying when I was married. And she said, the Lord told us to go to Texas. I said, well, God ain't told me that. I said, I ain't going nowhere. So I went to sleep. And an angel came into the room and said, go to Texas. I said, Texas? I ain't even been to Texas. I've seen movies in Texas, stuff like that, right? So we did. We found us a big map, put it on the wall. We ain't never been to Texas. We're praying, believing God. Then I, uh, then we went to the downtown, to the Milwaukee Library, got one of the telebooks, book, phone books for Texas. We just start calling who God said calling in that book. There was a church and pastors. So we call five pastors. One was an apostle. And I never forgot that man because he was so religious when I got there. But God used him to get me there. So call this man, establish a relationship with him on the phone. We're conversing for a couple of months. Just he can encourage me. You can do it, man of God. You can come down here. God wants you to come down here. All of this, that, right? So we went and got our map. We said, okay, well, here's Wisconsin. So let's figure out how we went from Wisconsin down to Texas. So we started drawing on the map to get to Texas, right? So as we did this, when we finally got there, we even made it downtown Dallas, and we didn't know where it was at because we never been there before. So I called the man of God. He came and met us. Went to his house, and, and, and the man of God said, yeah, I'm glad you came. Praise the Lord. You know, God going really good, got great things for you and, and, and he gonna really use you. He said, matter of fact, you're a pre preacher, you can sing in my church tomorrow. Now I'm like, okay, oh, I come wait down here just to sing. <laughs> I said, God, you got jokes. <laughs> so, to make a long story short, got to church that Sunday morning early for service start, meet him in the office. He says, man of God, you hungry for God. So I can see it all over for you. But your wife, she need to sit down and be told. I'm like, wait a minute. You don't know nothing about my wife. So the flesh rose up. You don't know nothing about my wife. You can tell me where she is, where she hungry, where she hungry for God. Blah, 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 right? I was so mad when I walked out of the office. I said, I ain't come back here no more. So we, then we had to do, we wanted to sing. So I said, I'm going to be obedient. I'll sing. At the church, then he took her to his house. To, to eat. So we, went to, we ended up going to one of the deacon's house. We thought it was his house. So it was the deacon house. Deacon religious too. Wouldn't even talk to us. I was like, how are you going to serve God's people and you ain't got no hospitality? You know, I'm like, come on now. Something wrong with this. So both our spirits just dropped to the floor. But prior to that, we passed Emmanuel Christian Center coming down the street going to his house. And I, I looked at her, and she looked at me, and I said, we need to check that church out. And I ain't know we were going to end up going to that church that same day. So that Sunday after leaving that deacon house, we both broke in our spirits, went back to the hotel room. We just, like, messed up, like, God, why you bring us here? Why are we here? What's going on? So we went to the hotel, and we found, we stopped at that church on our way back to the hotel. This little autistic young boy came out. His name was Gordon. I never forgot him. He's such a beautiful personality, a spirited young man. He said, you're coming to our church, little white boy. He said, you coming to our church? I said, you know what? Yeah. Let me go get, get my stuff from the hotel. We'll, we'll be right back. We the hotel, came at that church, and the pastor was white. The church was white, and they had a few black people and a few Mexicans there. And so after that, went into this, this church service, and they started their service singing praise the Lord. And my wife said, you ought to go up there and sing with them. I said, you don't do that, people in church. You just don't just invite yourself to their choir stand. You ain't been invited. You don't do that. So she told me, right? And, and I was like, no, I ain't doing it. How come 10 minutes later, an elderly mother in the church heard me sing and said, you need to go up there and sing with them? I said, oh, my God. So went up there and sang with them. And... And I, I didn't even know the songs. Never heard them before. The Holy Spirit taught me every song they were singing during that service. And I began to sing as if I been singing for years with them. And when it got done, the pastor said, what is your name? And I told myself, Evangelist Emery from Milwaukee. 
He said, man of God, God brought you here. He says, God got great work for you. He said, he's going to use you in the ministry. You got a great calling in your life. Your wife got a great calling in her life. And she got birthed in this prophetic dance during that service. And then not only that, one of the brothers, Mexican brother, I didn't know was moving back to Mexico, who was one of the uh, ministers in that church, came up to me, what's your name? And I told him, so the elder lady came back, so what's your name again? And wrote us a check for $200. I said, okay, God, what are you doing here? You, you know, because I never had this happen before. And so it was something out the norm, and it brought me to the plan. Because I said, so God had a plan. I had no idea where I was going, who I'm going to meet, but God had it in the plan. Abraham had no clue where he was going, but God had a plan. And God said, I will show thee where to go. So when he made this covenant with him, he told me, you know what, Abraham? I'm going to change your name because I called you to be the father of many nations. He changed Sarah because she laughed. But God had a plan. God had a plan. So because of this, I thought about the lineage. If it hadn't been for Abraham, Isaac wouldn't have came. Jacob wouldn't have came. David wouldn't have came. Solomon wouldn't have came. Because God had all these people in position in the plan to lead up to the Messiah. Everything the scripture talks about is a journey that he had to take them through in order for to get to the New Testament where the Messiah will be born in a manger by a virgin. And because of that, God said, you know what? It was all in the plan for the wise man to see the star shining in the east that pointed to the place of the Messiah. Then after that, God says, Herod got a contract on your life. Now move the baby from that place to another place because I'm protecting you because I don't want the seed to be killed. I don't want the child to be killed. So I got to let the covenant roll on in love. My God, my God. So when you get to the New Testament, the Messianic Covenant, it brought us redemption. Because without the shedding of blood, what the word said, there would be no remission for sins. But because of the blood of the Lamb, the Lamb says, you know what? I got the plan. Because the Father released the plan from himself to my hand, so I got a plan for you. <coughs> my God. And because of the plan, God said, you know what? I know the time when you're going to turn. I know the time you're going to get sick and tired of being sick and tired. I know the time when you're going to have a vision to start a church. I know the time you have a vision to expand the church. He said, I got a plan. So in the plan, I got the people strategically planted to be part of the plan. Oh, my God, that's good. So God says, you know what? Because of this plan, stay connected to the prophet. Receive the prophet in the name of prophet. Receive the prophet reward because it's in the plan. I said that a while back. I said, because he's blessed, I'm blessed. Because I'm blessed, you're blessed. Because we're connected to him. And God says, it's all in the covenant of love because I haven't sent a man named Cornell Anderson in position for such a time as this. I ordained him, I anointed him, I appointed him, I sent him out because he had a plan. I escaped from the Savior back to him because now he got to fulfill the plan. My God. So we're all here because of the plan. And God says that in this plan, whatever you need, stay connected. 
you stay connected. It's going to trickle down from him to you. I said on the prayer line a couple of days ago, I said, God had ordained us as a reservoir of blessings. He says, my love is a reservoir. So you stay by the root. We talked about that before, about a tree planted by rivers of water who leaves in a wither and sees whatever it do shall prosper. God says, it's in the plan that as everybody come together by the river of living water, the love that's in the water begin to flow from you to every heart you come in contact with, that they will benefit from the love of God to change their life. And he said, because of the love covenant, I ordain such a time like this that all the people of the world will be blessed when they come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The reason the word said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. If I be lifted up, I'll turn the heart of men back to their children. If I be lifted up, I'll take your midnight and turn it into day. If I be lifted up, I'll heal your broken heart and bind your wounds. If I be lifted up, everything in your life will realign itself back to the plan that I have for you. I am a God who knows the plan I have for you to prosper you and do you no harm. I haven't expected it. So it's deep for you to be blessed. All because of the plan. But you got to know something for yourself. Unless I'm willing to say, Lord, here I am. All to thee I owe. I surrender my all to you. Nothing's going to happen in the plan until you get your mind made up and your heart right with God. Nothing's going to work in the plan. But I found out when I call on the name of Jesus, the same one who hung out on Calvary's cross. The same one who took off his robe of righteousness was clothed in the cloak of sin for you and me. The same one had a crown of thorns on his head. The same one took the piercing in his side, the nails in his hands and his feet. The same one that had the plan for you and me for redemption. He hung there on that cross from the sixth to the ninth hour. That you and I could be born again. The Bible said they took him down and laid him in the grave. He stayed there three days and three nights. On the third day, he got up with all power in his hand. He got up with a plan for your life. That you will follow me all the days of your life. If any man desires to come after me. Let him first deny himself. Take up your cross and follow me. All to Jesus I owe. Because he paid that price. I got a cross to bear. You got a cross to bear. You got to follow him even to the grave. Glory to God. God says, I know it gets difficult. I know you get tired. I know you get frustrated, but I come to tell you today, I got a Savior. He says, cast your cares upon me, for I care for you. I know the pain in your heart. I know the mourning in your life. I know every sorrow and tear that cry from your eye. I'm the God who says, weeping and do it for a night, but joy comes in the morning joy comes in the morning joy wipe the tears from my eyes joy put a smile on my face joy wrapped in the bosom of his arms joy come the covenant to flow in my life glory to God the 
devil is a liar. He can't stop the blessings from flowing in your life. Only you can. Only you can. He can't stop the blessings from flowing in your life. Only you can. When you get rebellious, you get stubborn, you get prideful, you resist him, you turn your back on him. He said, you cut the blessing. No, I didn't. Because my blessings, they're eternal. Every promise that I have for your life is a yes and amen. So I deem it to be so in your life that the plan from 2,000 years ago continues to linger today in every heart that we can receive every precious promise that God has for me. It is for me. It is for me. It is for me. Every promise. It is for me. It is for me. It's for you today. All you got to do, why don't you stand? All you got to do is receive it by faith. The word tells us we going to make mistakes for all the sin and falling short of the glory of God. But one thing about God, I got a plan. You might slip, I got a plan. You might fall down, I still got a plan. And then my plan is called elevation. Because if you humble yourself in the midst of your falling, is I'll reach down right in that place where you are and love will lift you up because it's in the plan. The covenant plan is eternal. It cannot be revoked. When the king makes a decree, he seals it with a signet ring to deem it to be so in your life that nobody, I don't care who it is in your life, cannot come and revoke the covenant of love I have for you. Because his word tells us that I have loved you with an everlasting love. By my loving kindness have I drawn thee. There's a drawing today in this place. God moved in this place today. And he's still moving by his spirit right now. Whatever your situation is you're dealing with, let it go. Let it go. Because he can handle it. You can't. He can fix it. You mess it up. He'll take the storms and cause it to be a blessing. We take storms in our life and get stuck in a dark place. But he says, arise and shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. I come to tell you today that God says, if you rise up in a desperation and cry, said, my light will shine upon you, and the glory will fill your tabernacle. I don't know if you ever spent the glory for your time. I have many times. And it's not like anything else. When God fills you, you can't be empty. He, said, he will fill your cup till it overflows. You know why? Because there's people, everybody in this place got to reach. So I got to fill you up I got to have you, allow you to live in an overflow. Because there are people who need to hear your story. Hear your testimony. How God changed your life. And God says today, I'm causing a spiritual elevation in each one of you today. I'm provoking you to come up higher in me. I'm provoking you 
to rise up in me. I'm provoking you to let go of your selfish pride and haughty spirit. I'm provoking you to let go of your issues and the sin in your life. I'm provoking you to let go of the things that hinder you from entering to my presence. When you let go, I will fill you. I'll restore you. I'll revive you. I'll refresh you. I'll cause my sovereignty to reign on you to it soak you because of the love covenant. So you repeat after me, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for your word today. Let your word penetrate deep in my heart to change me that I have a God encounter like never before that a greater anointing will fall on me because of your love. Forgive me for the many times I walked away, I failed to trust you, I failed to surrender to you, but today, God, I thank you. There's the spirit of restoration into this place. Now restore me, cleanse me, perfect me, change me, that I be more like you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand praise. Amen. Let's give the Lord another hand praise for that message. Are you a covenant maker or are you a covenant breaker? That's one word for somebody today. That when God makes a covenant with you, it's up to you to keep that covenant going. Because so often we'll make a covenant with God and we'll break that covenant ourselves. But I hear the Lord saying, today is your day. He wants to make a covenant with you to make sure that everything is going to be all right. Everything that has been broken in your life, are you willing, are you ready to make a new covenant with the Lord? Lift that hand and say, Lord, let it be me. Come on, lift that hand and say, Lord, let it be me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to pray for you right where you are as you're standing all over the room. If you can stand, if you can stand. Hallelujah. I figured out that even when Adam and Eve ate from that tree, their minds were open. And they realized something about themselves. And they realized even at that moment they broke something. Broke a covenant. Sometimes we'll find ourselves in a disobedient mind and that mindset. But I believe that God is a God of a second chance. That's why from the Garden of Eden to Calvary started the plan. And in that plan was for you, 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 and everybody in this room. In that plan was to give you life and that more abundantly. It wasn't, it, it wasn't to make you feel bad, but it was to give you the opportunity to give you life so you can stretch out and say, Lord, I thank you. So all the things that we have been through in our life, we got to understand one thing, that God loves you so much that he gave his only begotten son 
that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. I love the Lord to this point in this depth right here that even when we're going through something, we got to know that we can call on one God. We can call on that name of Jesus. Anybody know that name today? Anybody know that name to be a healer? Anybody know that name to be a redeemer? Anybody know that name to be a deliverer? Anybody know that name to be a heart fixer? Anybody know that name to be a mind regulator? Anybody know that name? Hallelujah. Now, if you know him to be those things, I need that every believer to know that he can do those things to give God a shout of praise in this place. Hallelujah. Listen, I want to say something. I don't know who this is for that's in here on today, and we're going to pray, and we're going to get up out of here, is that that just like the serpent was in the tree, we have serpents in our lives that sits amongst us, sits in our homes, sits in the church, trying to alter your perception of your belief. And the moment you find yourself in disbelief and find yourself in a situation where you have disobeyed God, it is that very moment that conviction becomes on the inside of you. You'll find your own conviction that I felt something one right. I kind of knew something one right. But God would open your eyes in the midst, in the midst of your trouble, in the midst of your trials, and he will help you see the very thing that he wants to reveal to you. Somebody say, Lord, open my eyes. Open my eyes, Lord. See, because as long as we allow it to happen, it's going to continue to happen. It's going to continue to wreck your mind, wreck your body, destroy you inside out. I've been talking about the implosion and explosion on the outside. And I saw something the other day and I was, I was reading. As a matter of fact, I was reading on it and it was talking about the eggshell. An egg. Was in that egg a bird, some kind of bird or some kind of, depends on what hatches that egg determines what's coming out of the egg. But nothing comes out of the egg if I walk up to the egg and break it. What happens? The egg, what's in the egg dies. But what's on the inside of the egg, if it breaks out, guess what? It lives. So if somebody else break the egg, it dies. But if you break out of that egg, God said you'll live. Hallelujah. So whatever's on the inside of you, you got to get ready to release that thing. You got to get ready to give birth to that thing. And that birth in thing inside of you is your praise, is your shout, is your hands lifting up, is your hands telling God, I thank you. Is you saying, Lord, I surrender to you. Lift your hands and say, Lord, I surrender. So lift your hands. I want to pray for you right where you're standing at, right there. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray that every chain is broken, every stronghold is being released right now in the name of Jesus. That God, today is our day. A victory. It ain't that we shall overcome. We have overcome today. Because of your blood, God, we are redeemed by your blood. We are redeemed by your stripes. We thank you today, God, that as your many blessings fall from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet, 
that God, that every need is being met in this room. Hallelujah. The enemy is defeated in this room. God, you will be exalted in this room. Point to yourself and say, in this room. Hallelujah. That God, I'm no longer a slave to sin. I'm free today. Somebody say, I'm free. I'm free today. When I leave this place, Lord, when we leave this place, we're leaving something behind. Because when we enter back into our domain, we're going to find peace. We're going to find joy. We're going to find love. We're going to find everything that we need when I enter back into my domain. That every broken thing that's in my life is being repaired. Everything that I have lost is being restored right now in the name of Jesus. My children that were lost, they're being found today. They're finding their way home. Lord, I thank you. Because I no longer have fear. I have faith today. That I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I want you to say that with me. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Somebody give God praise and say amen. Listen, I, I, if you believe that God is doing a new thing in your life, won't you just give God another praise right there? <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, I want y'all to keep the Cannons family lifted up in prayer also during this week. Amen. Hallelujah. And I want to give y'all some good news. After 30 years of being married, we finna do it again. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you know, if we still alive, we in that. that we want to thank God for everybody that's watching this live. And you know that even though after 30 years, we learning something every year, every day about one another. And every time you mention the word marriage, the enemy going to try you. He don't care if you've been together 10 years, if you're going to redo it again. Hallelujah. He's going to try you in every which way. But in spite of all that he has been trying seven more days, I do again. Amen. Hallelujah. And I am so excited. I'm so excited. And I can't wait. It's going to be a four-day event pretty much. So that means it's going to be very long, but it's going to be beautiful. You know, we all, we all dream of that, 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 that one perfect marriage. Not, you know, not that marriages are perfect, but just that ceremony. You want it to be prestige. And I believe it's going to be great. I got friends coming from Texas, and I got friends coming from here in Milwaukee, Chicago, pretty much all over the place. My kids are coming down. We're about to celebrate. And I believe Khadijah was born when we first got married. She was just a toddler. She was just handheld, just probably not even a month old. Not even. Yep. And my wife was holding her, and we still got pictures of all that. We were walking down the aisle. i like, man, I was 21 then? Good Lord. Jesus. Now look at me now. I still feel 21 at times, but I ain't finna jump off no, jump off nothing, because I, I, I might not <laughs> feel like I can take it like I did when I was 21. Amen. Jumping down the stairs. My grandson said, jump like this, Papa. I'm like, no, nah, you can do it. 
I believe I can do it if I really got to, but if I, but if I ain't got to jump right now, I'm not going to do it. Hallelujah. Your daddy can do it. Amen. He might got some good knees on him. I don't want to try my knees out. I'm, I got 51 years on these knees. Amen. Hallelujah. But I know if I got to jump, I will jump. I jump off the second floor with him in my arms if I had to. Amen. But again, lift our hands, all hearts and minds, and we're finna ready to go home. Happy Father's Day again. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, as we get ready to go from this place, but never from your presence, may you rest, rule, and abide with each of us until we meet again. Let the church say amen. Amen. We're dismissed again. Happy Father's Day. Amen. We were so busy.